Hello, I'm Jer, your online tutor and guide, and welcome back to Learning English Pro, where I help you master the English skills needed to succeed in the professional world. Today, we're diving into a critical area, advanced business English for negotiations. Whether you're negotiating a contract, closing a deal, or managing conflicts, this lesson will equip you with the phrases and strategies you need to excel. And make sure to stay tuned after the lesson for more Business English. I've stacked this video with three additional Business English lessons to boost your English speaking abilities and really give you confidence in all manner of business environments. And these are all time stamped with chapters on the video scroll if you wish to jump ahead. So if you're ready, let's start this lesson and all the phrases covered are waiting for you in the video description if you wish to follow along. Negotiation is a vital skill in business, whether you're working on a multi-million dollar deal or simply resolving a conflict. It requires not only strategic thinking, but also a strong command of language. In today's lesson, we'll cover essential phrases, strategies and tips for effective business negotiations. Here's what we'll cover. Key phrases for different stages of negotiation. How to make and respond to offers. Strategies for handling objections and closing the deal. Let's start with key phrases you'll need during different stages of a negotiation. These phrases will help you navigate through the process smoothly and assertively. When opening the negotiation, you want to establish a professional tone and set the agenda. Our first phrase is, Thank you for meeting with us today. I'd like to start by outlining our objectives for this negotiation. Another way we could say this is, before we begin, let's agree on the agenda for today's discussion. Next up, let's look at presenting your position. Here, we really want to state clearly what the terms and conditions are. Let's take a look at two example phrases. Our main priority is securing a long-term partnership that benefits both parties. We propose a three-year contract with a fixed pricing structure. If you present your terms and conditions like these phrases, you'll come across as really professional. Next up, let's take a look at some phrases for making offers and counter offers. This is the core of the negotiation process. In light of your proposal, we're willing to offer a 5% discount on bulk orders. Let's try a different phrase. We appreciate your offer, but we need a more flexible payment schedule to proceed. Let's move on to clarifying and confirming terms. This process is all about ensuring both parties understand and agree on the details. Here's our first example. Just to clarify, you're suggesting a delivery schedule that begins in the second quarter, correct? To confirm, both parties are in agreement on the revised terms of service. These two phrases are really great at making sure that everyone is very clear on the details of the agreement. In our next section, Handling Objections, we'll be addressing concerns and pushing the negotiation forward. So if a party has an issue with one of the terms or conditions, you could say, I understand your concerns about the timeline, but we can expedite the process with additional resources. Or how about, while I see your point, I believe the current terms already offer significant value. With these phrases, you can soothe concerns and reaffirm your position. Next up, we have closing the deal. These phrases are all about finalizing the agreement and setting the stage for implementation. I think we've reached a mutually beneficial agreement. 
let's move forward with the contract. If there are no further concerns, we can proceed with drafting the final agreement. These phrases will help you guide the negotiation process from the opening discussion to the closing deal. Practice them to build your confidence and fluency. Next, let's focus on making and responding to offers. This is where your language needs to be precise, persuasive and flexible. When it comes to making an offer, we could say, given the current market conditions, we believe a 10% increase in price is justified. Let's try a different phrase. We're prepared to offer extended payment terms if you can commit to larger order volumes. And how about responding to an offer? Let's check out these two key phrases. While your offer is competitive, we would need a further reduction to align with our budget. Your proposal is intriguing, but we'd like to explore options for faster delivery. Remember, how you frame your offer or counteroffer can significantly impact the outcome of the negotiation. Use these phrases to ensure your offers are clear and persuasive. Negotiations often involve objections and challenges, but how you handle these can make or break the deal. Let's look at some strategies and phrases for overcoming objections and closing the deal. For handling an objection, you could say, I understand that the price may seem high, but let's consider the long-term savings this solution provides. Another phrase for handling objections could be, I see your concern about the timeline, but we can offer additional support to ensure deadlines are met. For closing the deal, I have two great phrases. It seems like we've addressed all the key issues. Shall we finalise the agreement? And our last phrase for this lesson. I'm confident this agreement will be beneficial for both of us. Let's proceed with the contract. Closing the deal is about summarising the agreed terms and expressing confidence in the outcome. These phrases will help you conclude negotiations effectively and leave a positive impression. Let's recap what we've covered today. Key phrases for opening, negotiating and closing deals. Strategies for making and responding to offers. Techniques for handling objections and ensuring a successful outcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Learning English Pro for more professional English lessons. And don't go anywhere. Up next, we have a lesson on how to transform 50 basic English phrases into professional business English. Remember, this is Learning English Pro, where you learn English like a pro. Welcome to today's lesson on transforming everyday English into business English. In this session, we'll go over common phrases and show you how to elevate them for a professional setting. Okay, let's get started. Our first basic English phrase is, can you do this? In a business environment, it's important to be polite and respectful when making requests. The phrase, could you please handle this? is more courteous and professional. Using please adds a level of politeness and handle this task sounds more formal than do this. Could you please handle this task? Our next basic phrase is I don't know. Saying I don't know can come across as dismissive or unhelpful. In business, it's crucial to show initiative and willingness to provide answers. By saying, I'm not certain at the moment, but I'll find out. You're acknowledging your current lack of knowledge, but also demonstrating a proactive attitude to seek out the information. I'm not certain at the moment, but I'll find out. Our third example of basic English is, I'll do it later. 
in business, it's vital to show you are managing your time effectively and taking tasks seriously. The phrase, I'll prioritize this and complete it as soon as possible, indicates that you understand the importance of the task and are committed to addressing it promptly, which conveys a strong work ethic. I'll prioritize this and complete it as soon as possible. Our next phrase is, that's not my job. Responding with this can seem quite uncooperative. In a professional setting, it's better to show a collaborative spirit, saying, I'll see if I can assist or find the appropriate person to help. Demonstrates a willingness to support your team and find a solution, even if the task isn't directly within your responsibilities. I'll see if I can assist or find the appropriate person to help. The phrase, I can't help you, might leave the person feeling abandoned. In business, providing a solution or an alternative is key. By saying, let me direct you to someone who can assist you, you're offering a constructive response, showing that you care about the person's needs and are committed to finding help for them. Let me direct you to someone who can assist you. Saying I'm busy right now might seem abrupt. Instead, you could try, I'm currently engaged in another task. Can we schedule a time to discuss this? By explaining your current engagement and suggesting a specific time to address the issue, you show that you value the person's concern while managing your priorities effectively. I'm currently engaged in another task. Can we schedule a time to discuss this? The phrase, it's not good enough, can sound harsh and demotivating. Saying, this needs improvement to meet our standards is more constructive and sets a clear expectation, encouraging better performance without being overly critical. This needs improvement to meet our standards. Saying I need a raise is very direct and seems a bit blunt. By saying, I'd like to discuss my compensation based on my performance and contributions. We are better framing a discussion about your performance and it shows you are open to dialogue and are basing your request on merit, which is more likely to be well received. I'd like to discuss my compensation based on my performance and contributions. Saying this is a bad idea can be discouraging. Instead, we could say, I'm concerned about the potential risks can we evaluate the alternatives? By saying this, you are showing that you can consider different perspectives and are willing to find the best solution together as a team. I'm concerned about the potential risks. Can we evaluate the alternatives? Saying I don't like it is subjective and unhelpful. Instead, we could say, I have some reservations. Can we explore other options? By using this phrase, you are providing a constructive critique and opening the door for discussion and improvement. I have some reservations. Can we explore other options? Why did you do that can come across as accusatory. Instead, we could say, Can you explain your reasoning behind this action? By saying this, you show that you are seeking to understand the thought process behind a decision, which is much more respectful and productive. Can you explain your reasoning behind this action? Simply stating that's wrong is not helpful. Our business English transformation is, there seems to be an error, Let's review it together. In this way, you are pointing out that there seems to be an error and suggesting a joint review encourages collaboration and problem solving. There seems to be an error. Let's review it together. Saying I'll try can sound uncertain. I will do my best to accomplish this. 
shows commitment and confidence in your ability to complete the task. I will do my best to accomplish this. It's not my fault sounds like you're blaming others and it can create conflict. By saying, let's identify what went wrong and how we can resolve it, you are showing that you foster a more cooperative and solution oriented environment. Let's identify what went wrong and how we can resolve it. Our 15th example is, I need more time. Instead, we could say, I require additional time to complete this thoroughly. Requesting more time in a straightforward manner can be perceived as a lack of planning. By explaining that additional time is needed to ensure thorough completion, you emphasize your commitment to quality work. I require additional time to complete this thoroughly. Saying I don't understand can feel abrupt. It's much better to say, could you clarify that for me? Asking for clarification is more polite and shows that you are actively seeking to comprehend the information. Could you clarify that for me? Next up, our basic English phrase is, I'll be late. In business English, we could say, I may not arrive on time. I'll keep you updated. Informing someone that you'll be late is important, but adding that you'll keep them updated shows that you are considerate of their time and responsibilities. I may not arrive on time. I'll keep you updated. Let's move on to I'm leaving early. Instead, we should say I need to leave early today. I'll ensure all my tasks are covered. When leaving early, it's courteous to assure that your responsibilities are managed. This statement shows that you are responsible and considerate of your work commitments. I need to leave early today. I'll ensure all my tasks are covered. Saying we can't do that shows an outright refusal and it can shut down dialogue. Instead, we could say, that may not be feasible, can we consider an alternative approach? By suggesting that something may not be feasible and proposing alternatives, you keep the conversation open and constructive. That may not be feasible. Can we consider an alternative approach? Our basic sentence is, you didn't tell me. We will say instead in business English, I wasn't informed about this. Can we discuss it now? By using the basic English version, you are kind of accusing someone of not informing you and it can create tension. By using the business English version, you can show that you are aiming to resolve the issue without assigning blame. I wasn't informed about this. Can we discuss it now? Saying that's impossible can be discouraging. Instead, you should say, that seems highly challenging. Let's consider how we might approach it differently. This phrase shows you have a willingness to find solutions. That seems highly challenging. Let's consider how we might approach it differently. Telling someone to hurry up can be perceived as rude. Instead, we could say, could you expedite this process? This is much more polite and maintains professionalism. Could you expedite this process? Stop bothering me is dismissive and rude. Instead, we could say, could you please address this later? This is more respectful and maintains a positive tone. Could you please address this later? Saying this is boring can be demotivating. Instead, say, this could be more engaging. Can we make some adjustments? This phrase comes across as being constructive and encouraging of improvement. This could be more engaging. Can we make some adjustments? 
Demanding action with do it now can be abrasive. Please address this immediately is a more polite yet urgent request, maintaining respect. Please address this immediately. It's okay to say that you made a mistake, but in a business sense, it's better to say, I need to correct an error. Let's address it together. This shows teamwork and a commitment to resolving issues collaboratively. I need to correct an error. Let's address it together. Saying it's too expensive can sound blunt. Instead, we should say, this exceeds our budget. Can we explore more cost-effective options? This phrase shows financial prudence and problem solving. This exceeds our budget. Can we explore more cost-effective options? Saying I need help might seem abrupt. Instead, we should say, could you assist me with this task? This is more polite and specific, which is appreciated in a business environment. Could you assist me with this task? Admitting forgetfulness with I forgot might come across as careless. Instead, you should say, it slipped my mind. I apologize for the oversight. This shows being able to take responsibility and a commitment to making things right. It slipped my mind. I apologize for the oversight. Saying it's not ready can sound unprepared. Instead, you should say, this is still in progress. I will inform you once it's complete. This sentence shows that you are actively working on something and you're managing someone else's expectations. This is still in progress. I will inform you once it's complete. Next up, let's change the basic English phrase, I can't make it, to, I won't be able to attend. Can we reschedule? Informing someone that you can't attend is necessary, but offering to reschedule shows that you value the commitment and are looking for a way to make it work. I won't be able to attend. Can we reschedule? While that's great is positive, this is excellent work is more specific and gives clearer recognition of effort and achievement. This is excellent work. Saying I'm sorry is often enough, but in a business context, saying I apologize for any inconvenience cause shows a more formal acknowledgement of the impact. I apologize for any inconvenience caused. Saying no problem is informal. Instead, we should say, it's not an issue. This is more professional and it reassures someone that their request or action is acceptable. It's not an issue. Suggesting a meeting with let's meet can seem informal. Can we schedule a meeting is more professional and indicates respect for the other person's time. Can we schedule a meeting? While you're welcome is very polite, it was my pleasure as a touch of formality and warmth, which is often appreciated in business communications. It was my pleasure. Thanks is casual and can be seen as less sincere. Thank you very much is more formal and expresses greater appreciation. Thank you very much. Saying I don't agree is quite direct and might lead to conflict. Instead, we could say, I have a different perspective on the matter. By saying this, you are allowing for a more open and respectful dialogue. I have a different perspective on this matter. Saying this is urgent is direct, but can create unnecessary stress. 
This requires immediate attention is a more professional way to convey urgency without sounding alarmist. This requires immediate attention. Saying it's too late is very final and can close off discussion. Instead, we could say, we missed the deadline. Let's evaluate our options. This phrase comes across as being more constructive and solution-oriented. We missed the deadline. Let's evaluate our options. Saying I'm not interested can come across as dismissive. Instead, you should say, I don't see the value in this at the moment. By saying this, you leave room for further discussion if the situation changes. I don't see value in this at the moment. Our next basic English phrase is what's the point? This can come across as cynical or dismissive. Instead, you should say, could you explain the purpose behind this? This phrase is more respectful and encourages a clearer understanding. Could you explain the purpose behind this? While good job is positive, well done is slightly more formal and can convey greater sincerity in acknowledging someone's work. Well done. I'm on it is casual and can be interpreted as less committed. I'm handling it now is more formal and indicates that you are actively addressing the task. I'm handling it now. Can you wait sounds abrupt and rude. Could you please hold on for a moment is more polite and shows respect for the other person's time. Could you please hold on for a moment. Saying this is a mess can seem overly critical. In business English, we would say this needs significant improvement. This is more constructive and focuses on the action needed. This needs significant improvement. I'm done can sound informal and rushed. Instead, I have completed the task is more formal and provides clear communication about the work that is finished. I have completed the task. Telling someone you're wrong is quite confrontational. Saying I believe there might be a misunderstanding is much more diplomatic and opens the door for clarification. I believe there might be a misunderstanding. Saying that's not true can sound accusatory. Instead, you should say, I think there's some misinformation. This is more tactful and less likely to cause offence. I think there's some misinformation. And can you believe we're already on our 50th and final phrase? Let's go is informal and might seem a bit too casual in a business setting. Instead, you should say, let's proceed. This is much more professional and conveys the same sense of moving forward. These examples highlight the importance of being polite, proactive and solution oriented in a business environment. By refining your language, you can communicate more effectively and professionally. Practice these transformations and you'll see a significant improvement in your business interactions. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning. And today we're diving back into the world of business English and we'll cover a hundred essential phrases specifically tailored for customer service professionals. Customer service can be incredibly challenging, especially when dealing with tricky situations like handling complaints, understanding angry customers, or even delivering bad news. This lesson is designed to equip you with the precise language and phrases you need to navigate these difficult scenarios confidently and professionally. In my comprehensive lesson, we'll cover difficult scenarios like cold calling, understanding an angry customer, apologizing for a big mistake, handling complaints and calming the situation. I'll even cover polite phrases for dealing with rude customers. 
And how about if you have to say no to a customer and deny them a product or service? There are lots of topics to cover and even more phrases. So get ready to really boost your English proficiency. Don't forget to subscribe to Learning English Pro and hit the bell icon to stay updated on my latest lessons. Our first topic is cold calling and introducing yourself to customers. Cold calling is the term we use for reaching out to potential customers who haven't previously expressed interest in your product or service. Making a good first impression is crucial. Let's explore some key phrases to introduce yourself and your company effectively. Good morning, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. How are you today? Good morning, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. How are you today? Hello, I'm Jer calling from Learning English Pro. Hello, I'm Jer, calling from Learning English Pro. Hi, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. Do you have a moment to talk? Hi, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. Do you have a moment to talk? Good afternoon, my name is Jer and I'm calling on behalf of Learning English Pro. Good afternoon, my name is Jer and I'm calling on behalf of Learning English Pro. Hello, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. How are you doing today? Hello, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm Jer from Learning English Pro. I wanted to speak with you about English lessons. Hi, I'm Jer from Learning English Pro. I wanted to speak with you about English lessons. Good day, my name is Jer and I'm reaching out from Learning English Pro. Good day, my name is Jer and I'm reaching out from Learning English Pro. Hello, this is Jer calling from Learning English Pro. Is now a good time to talk? Hello, this is Jer calling from Learning English Pro. Is now a good time to talk? Good morning, I'm Jer from Learning English Pro. Can I take a few minutes of your time? Good morning, I'm Jer from Learning English Pro. Can I take a few minutes of your time? Hi, I'm Jer with Learning English Pro. I wanted to discuss how we can help your business. Hi, I'm Jer with Learning English Pro. I wanted to discuss how we can help your business. Let's move on to our next topic, which is understanding an angry customer. Dealing with angry customers requires empathy and patience. Here are some essential phrases to help you understand and calm things down. I understand you're upset and I'm here to help. I understand you're upset and I'm here to help. I can see why you're frustrated. I can see why you're frustrated. Your concern is completely valid. Your concern is completely valid. Let's see how we can resolve this issue. 
Let's see how we can resolve this issue. I apologize for any inconvenience caused. I apologize for any inconvenience caused. Could you tell me more about what happened? Could you tell me more about what happened? I'm sorry for any trouble you've experienced. I'm sorry for any trouble you've experienced. Please explain the issue so I can assist you better. Please explain the issue so I can assist you better. I'm here to listen and help resolve this for you. I'm here to listen and help resolve this for you. Let's work together to find a solution. Let's work together to find a solution. Up next, our topic is apologizing for a big mistake. When significant mistakes happen, sincere apologies are a must. These phrases will help you convey your regret and take responsibility. I deeply apologize for this mistake. I deeply apologize for this mistake. We are very sorry for the error. We are very sorry for the error. Please accept our sincerest apologies. Please accept our sincerest apologies. This was entirely our fault, and I'm very sorry. This was entirely our fault, and I'm very sorry. We regret the inconvenience this has caused. We regret the inconvenience this has caused. I understand this is very frustrating and I apologize. I understand this is very frustrating and I apologize. I'm sorry for the significant inconvenience. I'm sorry for the significant inconvenience. We apologize for any trouble this has caused. We apologize for any trouble this has caused. This was a serious oversight on our part. This was a serious oversight on our part. I assure you, we are addressing this issue immediately. I assure you, we are addressing this issue immediately. Let's take a break from dealing with these tricky situations and focus on our next topic, going above and beyond, being a customer service superstar. Exceeding customer expectations can turn a negative experience into a positive one. Let's learn how to go above and beyond with the next set of phrases. I'm here to ensure you have the best experience possible. I'm here to ensure you have the best experience possible. 
let me take care of that for you right away. Let me take care of that for you right away. I'll personally handle this issue for you. I'll personally handle this issue for you. I will make sure this is resolved quickly. I will make sure this is resolved quickly. Your satisfaction is my top priority. Your satisfaction is my top priority. I'll go the extra mile to help you. I'll go the extra mile to help you. Let me see how I can exceed your expectations. Let me see how I can exceed your expectations. I'll make sure you're completely satisfied. I'll make sure you're completely satisfied. I'll provide you with a special offer for the inconvenience. I'll provide you with a special offer for the inconvenience. I'm committed to making this right for you. I'm committed to making this right for you. Our next topic is handling complaints and calming the situation. Handling complaints effectively can diffuse tension and resolve issues. Here are key phrases to calm and reassure your customers. I apologize for the inconvenience. I apologize for the inconvenience. I'm sorry to hear that you're facing this issue. I'm sorry to hear that you're facing this issue. Let me see how I can make this right for you. Let me see how I can make this right for you. I understand your frustration and I apologize. I understand your frustration and I apologize. We are sorry for any inconvenience caused. We are sorry for any inconvenience caused. Please accept our apologies for this situation. Please accept our apologies for this situation. We apologize for the trouble you've experienced. We apologize for the trouble you've experienced. I'm here to help resolve this for you. I'm here to help resolve this for you. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. Let's see what we can do to solve this problem. Let's see what we can do to solve this problem. Maintaining professionalism with rude customers is essential. In our sixth topic, polite phrases for dealing with rude customers, we will use polite phrases to handle challenging interactions gracefully. I understand your frustration and I'm here to help. I understand your frustration and I'm here to help. Please allow me a moment to assist you. 
Please allow me a moment to assist you. I appreciate your patience as we work through this. I appreciate your patience as we work through this. Let's work together to resolve this issue. Let's work together to resolve this issue. I apologize if there has been any inconvenience. I apologize if there has been any inconvenience. I'm here to make things right for you. I'm here to make things right for you. Could you please explain the issue in detail? Could you please explain the issue in detail? Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. I'm doing my best to help resolve this for you. I'm doing my best to help resolve this for you. I appreciate your understanding. I appreciate your understanding. Our next topic is how to deny a customer a service or product. Saying no to a customer can be difficult. These phrases will help you deny requests politely and professionally. Unfortunately, we're unable to fulfill your request at this time. Unfortunately, we're unable to fulfill your request at this time. I'm sorry, but that service is not available. I'm sorry, but that service is not available. We apologize, but we cannot provide that product. We apologize, but we cannot provide that product. Due to company policy, we are unable to offer this service. Due to company policy, we are unable to offer this service. Regrettably, we don't have the capacity to accommodate your request. Regrettably, we don't have the capacity to accommodate your request. I understand your need, but we cannot fulfill it currently. I understand your need, but we cannot fulfill it currently. I apologize, but this is not something we can do. I apologize, but this is not something we can do. I'm sorry, but we cannot provide this at the moment. I'm sorry, but we cannot provide this at the moment. Unfortunately, this request is outside of our policy. Unfortunately, this request is outside of our policy. We are unable to offer that product right now. We are unable to offer that service right now. Our next topic is explaining bad news to customers. Delivering bad news is never easy, but with our next set of phrases, you will be able to communicate unfortunate information with empathy and clarity. 
I regret to inform you that there has been an issue. I regret to inform you that there has been an issue. Unfortunately, we have encountered a problem. Unfortunately, we have encountered a problem. I'm sorry to say that there will be a delay. I'm sorry to say that there will be a delay. We regret to inform you that we cannot proceed as planned. We regret to inform you that we cannot proceed as planned. I apologize, but there has been an error. I apologize, but there has been an error. Unfortunately, we are unable to complete your request. Unfortunately, we are unable to complete your request. We have identified an issue and are working to resolve it. We have identified an issue and are working to resolve it. I'm afraid there has been a setback. I'm afraid there has been a setback. We apologize for any inconvenience caused by this news. We apologize for any inconvenience caused by this news. Unfortunately, we must inform you of this problem. Unfortunately, we must inform you of this problem. Our second last topic is follow-up and confirmation. Following up and confirming details shows customers you care. Use these phrases to ensure clear and continuous communication. I'll follow up with you in a few days. I'll follow up with you in a few days. Can I confirm your details for follow-up? Can I confirm your details for follow-up? I'll send you a confirmation email shortly. I'll send you a confirmation email shortly. Please let us know if the issue persists. Please let us know if the issue persists. I'll check back with you to ensure everything is resolved. I'll check back with you to ensure everything is resolved. Is it okay if I contact you for further updates? Is it okay if I contact you for further updates? We'll keep you updated on the progress. We'll keep you updated on the progress. I'll make sure to follow up on this matter. I'll make sure to follow up on this matter. We'll confirm once the issue is resolved. We'll confirm once the issue is resolved. Please expect a follow up call soon. Please expect a follow up email soon. Ending a customer service interaction on a positive note is important. 
In our final topic, closing the interaction, these phrases will help you close your conversations professionally. Thank you for your time and patience. Thank you for your time and patience. It was a pleasure assisting you today. It was a pleasure assisting you today. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you for choosing Learning English Pro. Thank you for choosing Learning English Pro. We appreciate your business. We appreciate your business. Don't hesitate to contact us again. Don't hesitate to contact us again. Take care and thank you for calling. Take care and thank you for calling. We look forward to serving you again. We look forward to serving you again. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you and goodbye. Have a wonderful day ahead. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you for joining me on this English Masterclass on Essential Customer Service Phrases. I hope you found them helpful and feel more confident handling various customer interactions. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep using these phrases to enhance your communication skills. In this lesson, we'll be learning effective communication for call center agents. In today's fast-paced customer service environment, the ability to communicate clearly and efficiently is essential, whether you're handling a customer's first inquiry, resolving a technical issue, or managing a complaint. The right words can make all the difference. In this lesson, we'll cover a hundred essential phrases that every call center professional should have in their toolkit. These phrases are grouped into common topics and scenarios you'll encounter daily, from greeting customers to providing technical support and handling complaints. By mastering these phrases, you'll be better equipped to provide exceptional service, build strong customer relationships, and handle a wide range of situations with confidence and professionalism. So let's get started and enhance our communication skills to ensure every customer interaction is positive and productive. Our first topic is greeting and introduction. Good morning. This is Jer from Learning English Pro. How can I assist you today? Good morning. This is Jer from Learning English Pro. How can I assist you today? Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. My name is Jer. How can I help you? Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. My name is Jer. How can I help you? Hello, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. What can I do for you today? Hello, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. What can I do for you today? Hi, you've reached Learning English Pro. How may I assist you? Hi, you've reached Learning English Pro. How may I assist you? Welcome to Learning English Pro. My name is Jer. How can I assist you today? Welcome to Learning English Pro. My name is Jer. How can I assist you today? 
Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. How may I help you today? Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. How may I help you today? Hello and thank you for calling Learning English Pro. This is Jer. How can I assist? Hello and thank you for calling Learning English Pro. This is Jer. How can I assist? Good afternoon. Thank you for contacting Learning English Pro. How may I help you today? Good afternoon. Thank you for contacting Learning English Pro. How may I help you today? Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. My name is Jer. How can I assist you today? Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. My name is Jer. How can I assist you today? Hi, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. How can I be of service to you today? Hi, this is Jer from Learning English Pro. How can I be of service to you today? So lots of phrases there for greeting and introducing yourself and your company to a potential customer. Let's move on to phrases on how we can identify their customer and discover what their needs might be. Can I have your name and account number, please? Can I have your name and account number, please? May I know how I can assist you today? May I know how I can assist you today? What seems to be the problem you're experiencing? What seems to be the problem you're experiencing? Can you please provide more details about your issue? Can you please provide more details about your issue? How can I help resolve your issue today? How can I help resolve your issue today? Could you please describe the issue you're facing? Could you please describe the issue you're facing? Let's start with your name and the nature of your call. Let's start with your name and the nature of your call. How can I assist you with your account today? How can I assist you with your account today? Can you give me a bit more information about the problem? Can you give me a bit more information about the problem? What specific issue are you having with our service? What specific issue are you having with our product? Very good. Let's move on to our next topic, which is confirming and verifying information. Let me verify your details, please. Let me verify your details, please. Can you confirm your address and phone number for me? Can you confirm your address and phone number for me? May I have your email for verification purposes? May I have your email for verification purposes? 
I'll need to verify some information before we proceed. I'll need to verify some information before we proceed. Can you please confirm your date of birth? Can you please confirm your date of birth? I need to verify your identity. Can you provide your account number? I need to verify your identity. Can you provide your account number? Please confirm the last four digits of your social security number. Please confirm the last four digits of your social security number. Could you spell your last name for me, please? Could you spell your last name for me, please? Can you confirm the last transaction on your account? Can you confirm the last transaction on your account? Let me check our records to verify your account details. Let me check our records to verify your account details. Wonderful, you're doing great. It's time for our next topic, listening and having empathy for customers. I understand your frustration. Let me see how I can help. I understand your frustration. Let me see how I can help. I'm sorry to hear that you're experiencing this issue. I'm sorry to hear that you're experiencing this issue. I can understand how this might be frustrating for you. I can understand how this might be frustrating for you. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. I apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. I apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. I appreciate your patience as we work through this. I appreciate your patience as we work through this. I'm here to help and I will do my best to resolve this for you. I'm here to help and I will do my best to resolve this for you. I understand your concern. Let's see what we can do. I understand your concern. Let's see what we can do. I'm sorry that you're facing this issue. Let's work on fixing it. I'm sorry that you're facing this issue. Let's work on fixing it. Thank you for your understanding as we resolve this matter. Thank you for your understanding as we resolve this matter. So some very handy phrases there for dealing with people who are annoyed. For our next topic, let's look at phrases relating to providing solutions and assistance to customers. Here's what we can do to resolve your issue. Here's what we can do to resolve your issue. I can assist you with that right away. 
I can assist you with that right away. Let me walk you through the steps to fix this. Let me walk you through the steps to fix this. We can offer you a replacement or refund. We can offer you a replacement or refund. I will escalate this issue with our technical team. I will escalate this issue with our technical team. I'll make sure this gets resolved as soon as possible. I'll make sure this gets resolved as soon as possible. Let me guide you through the process to resolve this. Let me guide you through the process to resolve this. We can schedule a technician to visit your location. We can schedule a technician to visit your location. I will update your account with the necessary changes. I will update your account with the necessary changes. Let me provide you with some troubleshooting steps. Let me provide you with some troubleshooting steps. Let's take a look at some phrases relating to handling complaints. I'm sorry you're not satisfied with our service. I'm sorry you're not satisfied with our service. Let's see how we can make this right. Let's see how we can make this right. I apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused you. I apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused you. I'll do my best to resolve this issue for you. I'll do my best to resolve this issue for you. We value your feedback and we'll use it to improve our services. We value your feedback and we'll use it to improve our services. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. I can understand why you're upset. Let's find a solution. I can understand why you're upset. Let's find a solution. I will personally ensure this is taken care of. I will personally ensure this is taken care of. I'll escalate your complaint to our management team. I'll escalate your complaint to our management team. I apologize for any trouble you've experienced. I apologize for any trouble you've experienced. In our next section, explaining policies and procedures, our list of phrases is something that you can use to integrate them with your company's specific policies and procedures. So let's take a look at the first phrase. Our policy states that. 
So I'll give you an example for this first phrase. Our policy states that returns must be made within 30 days of purchase. So I've used this phrase to communicate a particular rule to a customer. So for the next phrases, why not try integrating some of your own company's policies and procedures with each phrase? According to our records. According to our records. The procedure for this is as follows. The procedure for this is as follows. Let me explain how this works. Let me explain how this works. Here's what you need to do next. Here's what you need to do next. Our guidelines require that. Our guidelines require that. This is the standard procedure for. This is the standard procedure for. I can clarify our policy on that for you. I can clarify our policy on that for you. The next step is to. The next step is to. This is what we'll need to do to resolve this. This is what we'll need to do to resolve this. I hope you're enjoying this lesson so far. Our next topic is technical support. Have you tried restarting your device? Have you tried restarting your device? Can you describe the error message you're seeing? Can you describe the error message you're seeing? I'll guide you through the troubleshooting steps. I'll guide you through the troubleshooting steps. Let's check your internet connection first. Let's check your internet connection first. Can you confirm if the device is plugged in? Can you confirm if the device is plugged in? Please follow these steps to resolve the issue. Please follow these steps to resolve the issue. Have you updated your software recently? Have you updated your software recently? I'll connect you with our technical support team. I'll connect you with our technical support team. Let's reset your device and try again. Let's reset your device and try again. Can you tell me more about the problem you're experiencing? Can you tell me more about the problem you're experiencing? We are already at our ninth topic upselling and cross-selling. This is where you can use some of your sales expertise with our English phrases. I noticed you might benefit from our premium service. 
I noticed you might benefit from our premium service. Did you know we have a special offer on English lessons? Did you know we have a special offer on English lessons? You might also be interested in You might also be interested in We have a new feature that you might like. We have a new feature that you might like. I'd recommend our English videos for your needs. I'd recommend our English videos for your needs. We have a bundle deal that could save you money. We have a bundle deal that could save you money. Would you like to upgrade to our premium package? Would you like to upgrade to our premium package? You might find our English lessons useful. You might find our English lessons useful. Let me tell you about our latest promotion. Let me tell you about our latest promotion. Have you heard about our new English masterclass? Have you heard about our new English masterclass? Coming up is our final topic, end of call and follow up. And coming up after that is my masterclass in business English. So make sure to stay tuned. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. Have a great day. Thank you for calling Learning English Pro. Have a great day. If you have any more questions, feel free to call us back. If you have any more questions, feel free to call us back. I'm glad we could resolve your issue today. I'm glad we could resolve your issue today. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you need further assistance. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you need further assistance. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Have a wonderful day and thank you for choosing Learning English Pro. Have a wonderful day and thank you for choosing Learning English Pro. I'll follow up with you to ensure everything is resolved. I'll follow up with you to ensure everything is resolved. We appreciate your business. Thank you. We appreciate your business. Thank you. Goodbye and thank you for calling Learning English Pro. Goodbye and thank you for calling Learning English Pro. Well done for sticking out throughout the entire lesson and learning a hundred new phrases for a call centre. I wish you the very best in your future employment.